Hello, Louisiana Beer Reviews back in Jefferson Parish. Part-time uh, reviewer guest, David. We have Modelo Especial. We did the canned version years ago. This is the original bottle version. Full flavored Pilsner style lager with clean, crisp finish. It's from Mexico, so it's not... Right, this Pilsner. falls along the lines of that Sierra style. I mean, not Sierra, not Sierra. Uh, Pilsner or Cal? No. No, Vienna style, I'm sorry guys. Uh, well, this one's golden. The Vienna would be a little more like Victoria, you know, the brown. Yeah, but didn't, didn't both both the Dos Equis and, and the uh, Modelo company start off with the darker beers and due to unpopularity moved to a lighter beer? I couldn't figure that out because I think the Negra and this lighter one, the, the Especial, right. came out at the same time, right, about 1925. Okay. So, they just were brewing different styles, you know, the Vienna style and then the German Pilsner style. Vienna being the capital of Austria, and uh, the Pilsner's coming from Czech Republic. Uh oh, so, Czech Republic, or back then Bohemia. So this one's this style is along the, the style of the Corona, right? Corona, yeah. Dos Equis, uh, Modelo, all would started. It, would it be safe to say that it, it's safer to drink the Modelo as opposed to the Corona right now? Oh, that's a bad joke. That's not any. That's not even a new joke. That's a bad joke. So it's golden. Not much head, but it would be in a narrow pilsner yeah, it's, glass. It's golden. It's a little darker than what we would normally look at something along this style. Um, what happened was you had all these German immigrants coming to the United States and to Mexico and Central America, Canada, wherever they went, and they brought that style over here you know yeah but in, in the united states you didn't have the laws about using corn or rice so over here guess what they use corn and rice as a filler yeah there you go so this one is this one made with maize as well i think it's made with mexican corn water yeah, it's maize barley malt yeah maize they call it in europe hops and yeast <clears throat> been on the market uh nearly 100 years so when they use the maize, is maize considered like a non-GMO corn, or is it a GMO corn? No. Nah. There's no way I could know that. I mean, it's that a big company. Interesting to figure out. I guess you could contact Grupo Modelo and ask them if they use genetically modified corn or, or non. Hmm. They might answer it. They might say it on the website hmm. okay. on the frequently asked questions. All right. well, Smells kind of spicy. Cheers. Less, less on a tangent. <clears throat> More in a beer. Yeah. Well, we get on tangents. Yeah. It um, smells. It's got. It's got a real like, kind of like a heavy, heavy, uh, heavy beer smell. Like, heavy. Yeah. Like like a, like a genuine beer smell. I'm getting a little biscuity malt. Like you would get with a, Heineken. Or Cronenborg, okay. something like that. I've only had coffee today and do any Dawn Busters or anything, or any whiskey challenges. <laughs> I like, did some of that. Like you may have done, so my palate's totally fresh, and, and my nose is too, and I'm smelling what, what I think is like a like a really rich, it is beer rich. smell. It's one of the most popular beers in America these days, and it's one of the fastest growing oh, beers. Yes. You know, it's it. I'll go ahead and taste it and we'll make some comments. Ah. Uh, oh, yeah. Crisp. Dry. So would you say this goes neck and neck with Corona beer? <laughs> Being Corona was around a long time. And it also kind of tastes a little bit like the Soul beer, too. Yeah, it's been on the market basically the same amount of time as Corona, yeah. 1925. Soul, yeah, that's a real old one from 1899. So those, those beers are all kind of similar in taste. This one, seem, to me, seems like it's got a, like more of a, it's kind of got like a heavy note to it. I'm detecting almost like some kind of salt, maybe. No. I get a little lemony note. It's very mild. Now, if you're looking for rich, super like hoppy beers. like something that would be, I don't know, Match with tequila, almost, it kind of seems like. Wow. I think it would go well with huevos, rancheros, 
pork, like some uh, salted pork you're talking about, like for bacon. Yeah, but it's almost got like salt going on with it. I'm not picking that up. I think the um, Johnny Walker Red Label and the uh, the um, Clam McGregor kind of cleansed my palate earlier. <laughs> Wrecked it. Uh, yeah, I'm getting something that's almost like a saltiness, almost like a little citrus going on, salty citrusy a little bit. Hmm. And those combinations you would get, like if you shot it, it's called shooting tequila. Yeah, I've never actually they had it. the lime salt tequila. kick twist to it. I've never had straight tequila, actually. I've only had those tequila concoction drinks, you know, those pre mix. One day I'll have to try some. That's it. This. Oh, uh, yeah. That kind of thing. Pretty good. Sprint. Pretty good brand, huh? That's it. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's uh, it's definitely Mexican and it's 100% agave. Ah, uh, I knocked mine out. Lighter body, crisp finish. I can see why people drink it all around. Yeah. I know it. I'm gonna screw. I prefer the darker. I mean, I prefer the Modelo Negra. I. I think it's pretty good, and I'm gonna go ahead and do a little infusion uh -oh. while we talk of uh, Antigua You see? Tequila? And, yeah, Antigua. I guess that means Antigo. antique. Antigua. Right. Respond. What is that? Antiguo de Herradura uh, Reposado. Reposado. So we're gonna go ahead and try some of this in there. I don't know why the horseshoe's upside down. So I'm just put a little bit in it, do a little tequila infusing hmm. into this since I was getting some of the notes. So smells like paint thinner. What you get it smells like paint thinner. To this, me. It's called tequila. It's 100% blue agave. So that's what it's going to smell like. Okay. It's from Mexico. 1924. And the beer's 1925. Hey. So it might match. All right, so I put just a little bit in it to see what it tastes like. You're, you're hearing about all these beers that are being infused. Uh, I do believe somebody this morning did a $10 ridiculous beer review of something out of Urban South. Hmm. Yeah. I, was, I, I, I didn't watch I the felt whole video. So, I was so irritated. I don't, know, I don't know how that came up, but I'm thinking $10 for a 16-ounce can. Mm. Uh, 16.9 ounce can. Oh, excuse me, 500 milliliter. But I was irritated, That's you know, because it wasn't that good. You know, uh, you, you watch the whole video when you get a chance. You're going to see how irritated I was. It still was a beat, but I think it had a little bit of worm in there. No. So, did the infusion help? Uh, the infusion worked. It worked perfectly. Uh, you just take a little bit of this, and you know we've experimented with the so-called barrel agedness earlier. Yeah, right. In other videos where we take bourbon. a really great stout that only costs you a couple of dollars, and then take a little bit of whiskey or bourbon, put it in there, and you get almost something that's exactly like those bourbon barrel things that everyone's, or they did years back to chase them down. Yeah, like Stand this, in line. Like when we added the Heaven Hill to the CBS. Black Friday, get this. When we added Heaven Hill to the CBS, it enhanced it. It did. It did. It, it, it took what was there and kind of balanced it out. So I'm going to, well, I'm going to let you score it first. What do you score this beer? Um, Before I'm going to give it, I'm, I'm going to give it right at about a 90 before the infusement. And then I'll give it a 95 after the infusement. Because I think just a slight bit of tequila coming from this beer uh, actually bumped it and made it taste a little better. I'm going to probably go with a 92 and uh, on its own. And But if I ever buy this, you know I always buy the Modelo Negra. Not the right. Especial. I love that one. I was like a 95, you know. But this is good if you prefer the lighter, not the dark. And, uh, you know, hey. Yeah. Last so, night I went out and had some uh, nachos and I uh, had the uh, Dos Equis Ambar. Oh, the Ambar from Dos Equis. That's yeah. a really good one. No, everybody everybody calls it the Amber, and you're like, no, it's A M B A R Ambar. So it's like they look at you like you got three heads. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, you can't read, but <laughs> and that's the original Dos Equis. The Lager Especial didn't come on till the 1980s. Yeah, that's what I was inquiring about. What the Negra 
was. I think they came out simultaneously, from what I've been able to understand. Uh -huh. All right, so lazy lay. There is an amber version of this, but I, I don't think they make it anymore. There was an amber. I would recommend this beer. I think it's delicious. It tastes really good. It's refreshing. It's got that little bit of citrus note to it and slight saltiness. I so don't get that, but I would say with all those notes that you're getting from it, it's, it's something. It's like a warm at a warm weather beer, not something where your iron flannels. No, <laughs> no. So, ladies and gentlemen, long time we're We're going to end this review by saying, y'all, come on down to southeastern Louisiana, Jefferson Parish in particular. And drink better beers, kids. <laughs>